One of the most interesting changes that we've had in our understanding of chronic disease has come from a new field called the developmental origins of chronic disease. And it really started with David Barker, whose picture you can see on the upper left. And David Barker performed a number of experiments that were really helpful in, in leading us to understand how this field works. So if you look at this curve, what he found was the left side of the curve. And what he showed was that if you were born at five pounds or less in Hertfordshire, England, your risk of dying of heart disease is three to five times higher than if you were born at nine pounds. Now, in his data, there was a slight uptick that showed that maybe babies born heavier than nine pounds had increased risk too. But he wasn't certain, and he didn't publish it. But later, data from Harvard and other places and many of our colleagues around the world have shown that this curve is really a U-shape which means that your risk of dying of heart disease is dependent on your weight when you're born in a U-shaped manner, and that you're at the lowest risk if you're born in the eight to nine pound range. Now, this has been repeated now in several uh, different studies, which I've shown in the box, even if you can't read it, just to make the point that in the UK, India, the US, Finland, and China, this relationship has been shown to exist in all of those different populations. And in each case, the, the risk for disease is about the same where whatever weight you are, even though if you're born in a country like India where birth weights are extremely low, you will still be on that curve. So this led biological scientists like myself and others to try to understand what are the biological underpinnings of this. And we started looking at how the body has changed based on how we grew before we were born. And we discovered some very interesting things. And that is that there are two major changes. One are anatomic changes. For example, if you're born at the low end of the birth weight scale, you'll have many fewer nephrons in your kidney, and you'll be more prone to have high blood pressure. You'll have many fewer beta cells in your pancreas, and as we have shown in our group, you will have fewer cells in your heart, which will make you more prone to having coronary disease and also heart failure later in your life. The other side of this is an epigenetic effect. And that is, if you're born at the low end of the birth weight scale, many genes in your body that are vulnerable for being sensitive to the environment will be modified in such a way that it will make you more prone to have metabolic disease later in your life. So we started asking the question, is the bottom half of the curve, that is the low birth weight effect, anywhere like the high end of the curve? And what we've shown is that these curves occur for almost all chronic diseases. So for example, I could show you a curve like this for diabetes, and this again came from David Barker's group, first among men who are insulin resistant. And what he showed that if you make the same curve for men who are insulin resistant, that the chance of having insulin resistance or diabetes <coughs> is about eight times higher in, in men who were born at the very low end of the birth weight scale than those that were born at a medium weight in the eight to nine pound range. And what he also showed now is that that risk goes up for people who are born at really high birth weights. And let me say that you're probably thinking now, well, what about those babies that are born heavy? And you'll be thinking correctly if you're thinking that most of the babies in that category are born with poor insulin control in their mothers during that time. So now we've looked at the risk of obesity. And again, this one now is taking from the Helsinki birth cohort. And here you can see there's the same sort of shape curve with a slightly different nadir being at a, at a lower birth weight. Nevertheless, what you can see is that as babies gain weight beyond about 3,000 kilograms or seven pounds, that when they will have an increased risk for being obese as adults. So we built a model, and the model is based on the notion that most people, especially in Western countries like in the United States, are malnourished. 
And why are they malnourished? For all the reasons you've already heard today, because calories are cheap and nutrients are expensive. And not only that, calories give you more reward when you buy them cheaply, because there's a lot of salt, sugar, and fat that are added to them. So what does that have to do with the outcome of people who are born in these conditions? At the extremes of body mass index, women who have a lot of fat mass when they deliver, and I'll just give you a statistic, at our hospital now, over half of all the women who deliver in our hospital are classified as obese. So it's a very large number. And women who have high fat mass could have babies that are very small, and in our non-human primate studies on high fat diets, the babies are generally smaller, not larger than normal, unless they are diabetic. If they have poor glucose control, they can give birth to a baby that has a lot of fat on the body. But the interesting part from this model is that both babies at the small end, whether they came from a woman with very low BMI and, high, and low muscle mass, will have an increased appetite. This is called catch-up growth in small babies. They start eating higher calories, and by the way, it can be seen in any animal model. They also have more weight gain in childhood, and they're more likely to have metabolic disease. Now, what we've also shown in animal models that, that this can be passed along generations. I'm going to finish with this slide, and I want you to notice the baby that's being held. This picture was taken from the NIH archives, and the picture was taken in 1931. This baby was born in 1929, and if you look at the upper right corner, she must look something like that now being 87 years old. And the disease is that she's likely to contract based on her early life experiences in the womb are based on the fact that when she was a baby, the egg that made her was made in the mother that's holding her. That egg was, born, was made in that mother's ovary, and it turns out that that ovary was developed when that woman, who's there at 27-year-old, was in the woman on the left. So the egg that made that woman, who's now 87, was nourished by her grandmother. <laughs> we call this the 100-year effect, and that means that across generations, nutrition can affect the way the baby grows. And lastly, let me point, is the woman holding the baby, the egg that made her was made in that woman who's sitting down in front, and she doesn't look too happy. <laughs> 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 That's cool.